Well, I always enjoyed the animal side of farming. Uh, grew up on a really small farm with about half steep timber land. Uh, wasn't going to support two families, certainly. And the likelihood of going back into production ag agriculture and the investment required and all of that just looked really daunting. So an academic career seemed like maybe the next best strategy, and I, I guess I've never really avoided or ever really regretted that. Uh, the advantages of being able to work with livestock producers, able to work with animals uh, in a, a somewhat different environment. I always enjoyed the fact that if I ever got really tired of sitting here, I could go out to the barns and find something to do. Most of my work, almost all of it's been in various topics of quantitative genetics. Uh, the last decade, mostly with sheep. Uh, we did the EBVs, the genetic evaluation work for the American sheep industry for 10 years, uh, working with data sets and producers all over the country. Uh, worked with genetics of seasonal breeding, uh, trying to develop sheep that effectively had, did not show a seasonal anestrus. And we were reasonably successful in that. We got uh, animals that would probably go anestrus for at most to four to six weeks during the course of the year. So that was a fun project. Well, the biggest change in genetics by far has been the emphasis on molecular techniques and the potential to use the animal genome to predict future performance as opposed to using just data for that prediction. Uh, we still struggle a little bit with where that will take us, uh, but it's very exciting. That's obviously been the biggest change. Uh, disease resistance, I think, still remains the biggest opportunity, just as we piggyback on human medicine, to redefine risk factors for certain animals for certain diseases. Uh, in human medicine, I really think the potential for genetically uh, characterized treatments of disease is going to be tremendously important. We're going to know what drug to give me for a certain condition, and you may get a completely different drug based upon your genetic predispositions. And I think that will spill over into the animal world. Whether we will really ever be able to use the genome alone to predict things like wool production by sheep or milk production by dairy cattle is a very different question. It's obviously much more complex than we hoped it would be. I think to some extent you must choose where you want to make your contribution. I see a lot of students with an interest in genetics who go, well, I, I want to do molecular and I, I want to do breeding, and I don't think they appreciate what a vast distance spans all that. So I try to tell students, if you want to do quantitative genetics and breeding, you must be conversant with molecular techniques in the laboratory. If you want to be in the laboratory working on a molecular focus, you must be conversant with the quantitative techniques, but you can't specialize in all of it. It's just too broad. And so increasingly we need teams, we need different specialties, we need the ability to bring groups together who contribute to the laboratory part, the sequencing part, the gene expression part, the quantitative part, the breeding part. Uh, become much more a team effort than we ever had before. <laughs>